flown back the other way. <laughs> I've not flown back the other way. No, no, don't worry about it. Don't I'm worry. Not worried. We'll check it out later. Yeah. Now, I was just supposed to read you this because we're running out of time as ever. Yeah. Winners and losers coming up shortly. Mm. Uh, this has been sent to me by a concerned reader yes. uh, who was uh, looking around on the internet on mm. Amazon.co.uk oh, yeah. uh, and found mm. one of these reviews mm. of one mm. of your books, mm. right, which was an awful lot of bubbly in Brazil. And the uh, bestseller, by the way. Yeah, format hardcover, it says. Mm. Um, and the, uh, the, the, the rating is one star from mm. Andrew. He says about as useful as his internet uh, sports TV station. And who is Andrew? Well, he's somebody that bought the book. Somebody he's bought the book. He's given it a review. They give you one, just your first name. Well, and, and he's given it a review, hasn't he? He's given it a one-star review. How right? do I know that Andrew isn't a sort of um, half-baked? Well, you don't know that. No, of I course mean, I don't. You have to buy into the system. If, this yeah. is, if the review was good, you mm. want me to read it out. So I'm going to read this one out. Maybe somebody can find me a good but, one. But this is just a random review. There well, were thousands of reviews of that book. Yeah. It got into the well, Sunday to Times that. bestseller Did list, it? okay? All right. You know, it well, sold over 100,000 copies, all right, you know. Well, I'm just telling you what It was a magnificently said. written book by me about Mr. Brazil okay. in collaboration with Mr. Brazil. You have previously admitted it's full of lies, though, haven't you? Uh, don't be ridiculous. You How have. dare you? How you dare said you? that he couldn't remember half of things he'd done in his life, How so you? you had to make them up. Did, by the way, I've got a very funny story about well, Never mind books. that. Listen, I've, look yeah. at the time. Look, yeah. we haven't been on time for anything so yeah. far. Here, this yeah. is what it says, yeah. right? I feel I've overpaid for this book, and I'm seeking legal advice to get my one penny back. I have contacted Kate Aidy for advice in suing Mr. Parry, and will stop until this Bladderated buffoon has compensated me. <laughs> That's very what do you harsh. Say about that? that is very. I'm just saying it's very harsh, and anybody could write a review like that. Mm. So. Stick it in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah, another guy actually called Martin mm. sent mm. me a picture of a, t- of, uh, a b- of a copy of the book. Yeah, right? well, there it is. There, and yeah. uh, somebody said to him, how much did you pay for it? Was it a penny? And he says, better than that, uh, I won it in the free book exchange at work. Well, then in that case, they put quality books into those sort of book exchanges, mm. so it doesn't surprise me at all. No, indeed. Now, mm. we are out of time. And OK, because on... this will interest him as well. Now, you very rudely um, started making derogatory comments about my best-selling book earlier on. And I w- No, I was simply reading out one of the reviews from it. Uh, there's an awful lot of bubbly in Brazil. Yeah. Best seller. Sold over 100,000 copies. Some guy, copies. you know, a guy actually tweeted me yes. and said, I yes. can't believe it. He mm. said, I've just started reading the book. Yeah. And he says, I never believed Mike Graham, but he's mm. quite right. <laughs> it does say, yeah. the sky was inky black. <laughs> And the snow was as white as a tin of Dulux paint. It does, yeah. That's actually what you wrote. That is the opening paragraph. What an absolute shambles. Well, hang on. I was only writing exactly down... Emily Bronte, I, I was only writing down what Mr. Brazil said to me. What he did you want me to that. do? Bend the truth? Yeah, well, really? Well, that yeah. would be unusual yeah, for you. Yeah. I mean, we've already just learned that your you entire are... career, yeah. which has been based on you interviewing for the last time, yes. Rudolf Nureyev. Yes. In fact, somebody sent me a tweet, which mm. you tweeted, bizarrely, to Rio Ferdinand yes. in 2014. Mm. Right? This is how narcissistic you are. Yeah. Rio Ferdinand tweets out that he's in St. Bart's on holiday. Yes. You send him a tweet yeah. saying, oh, I was in St. Bart's. I had the last <laughs> yeah. interview with Rudolf Nuria. That's right, he yeah. died four minutes later. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not true, yeah. is it? Well, of course Because he died so. in Paris. No, no, no. That's, he died that, in Paris. No, that, honestly, that's erroneous. Anyway, let's get round to this one. This yeah, is what I'm going to tell you about my book, OK? Yeah. So, Sir Michael Parkinson um, was once asked <laughs> to write the life story of one of his heroes, oh, yeah. who was Fred Truman. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the, the bowler. The Shafas bowler, yeah. yeah. But he said, unfortunately, Fred Truman had a huge ego and was rather difficult to handle. Mm. He said... Unlike uh, unlike Michael Parkinson. uh, uh, Well, I'm not going to make comment on that. So Michael Parkinson writes, despite being a fellow Yorkshireman, um, this is somebody else writing about why Parkinson didn't write the book. He said, Parkinson found Freddie Truman almost impossible to deal with. Not only did they... This is the bit that makes me laugh. Not only did they disagree about the writing process... Um, but Truman thought that the only way the book could be produced would amount to sitting in a pub day after day with a tape recorder and getting smashed from opening time to closing time. <laughs> which is, well, which is how you did the Brazil book. I was about it? to say to you, that's exactly how we did the Brazil book. <laughs> that's exactly how we did it. Well, that sounds a great job. I mean, <laughs> I think a lot of people would love to spend uh, every day um, in the pub with ab- Brazil. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so why Michael Parkinson didn't go ahead on that basis, I simply cannot explain. No, indeed. Mm. Um, now, if it's Freddie, am I right in, or wrong in saying mm. this? Like, for some reason, I mm. think Freddie Truman had... Was there some boating accident where um, he had his toes cut off by a propeller? Oh, I don't know about was that. Was that somebody else? I know that his, um, his there was son... A cr- there was a very famous bowler who that happened d- to. Didn't his son marry uh, Raquel, um, Raquel Welch. Welch's son? Oh, mate, uh, I don't know. Sorry, sorry, my Raquel Welch's daughter. Oh, maybe, maybe. Or was that, or was that Harvey Smith? 
No, that was Harvey uh, Smith. Maybe. I was Harvey. I think Harvey Smith, the yeah. uh, the uh, Yorkshire the show jumper, show jumper the two used, fingers. To, used to give yeah. the V sign to all the authorities <laughs> when he was competing. That's right. I wondered why he never got like a, yeah, yeah. a CBE or something. Right. You know, he was a real I, I doer think Yorkshireman, wasn't he? It was either his daughter or Freddie Truman's daughter, really? both. You know. Dying of old Yorkshireman, right. you know, right. got a spear to spear, yeah. put dinner in tovin and all that, the, you know. Earth, yeah. So one of their daughters married Rachel Welch's son. Okay. Or the other way around. Certainly there was a wedding that she went to. That's right. She was very glamorous. That's right. Even more glamorous than the bride. That's right. And, and every, wore a very low-cut red dress. And right? everybody accused her of uh, well, stealing the day from the bride. That's yeah. right, yeah. I yeah. told you I once interviewed her on the phone. Oh, uh, Rachel Welch. Yeah, yeah, because I used to do some work <laughs> yeah. for this American yeah, magazine, right? And yeah. I was sort of, yeah. enough, and I had that, you know, that cool waiting you used to have in America? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we arranged for this phone call to be made. And I was on the phone to the Times business desk, right. logging them a couple of stories for the day. Yeah. And the thing went, beep, you know. Yeah. And I put the, uh, put, you know, press message to the guy, mm. hang on a second, mm. I'm going to take this other call. Yeah. Took the other phone. Mm. Uh, hi, uh, is, is Mike Graham there? I said, mm. yeah, this is he. He said, this is Racco Welsh. I literally, mm. I nearly fell over. Yeah, exactly. I was so excited. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. I was like, Racco, and I went back to the guy at the time and said, oh, I'm sorry, mate, I've got to go. Racco mm. Welsh is on the other line. Yeah. You didn't believe me. No, of course not. Of course not. No. Staggering. What anyway. were the songs were about? Uh, I was some makeup, some rubbish story. Really? It was a feature. I yeah. Was, you know, it was in the days when I would basically do anything for money. That's right. Yeah. And I was working. I think it's for the well, Globe. You still would do anything. Well, for not money. anything. Look at some of the things you do these <laughs> days. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you remember, the, you remember the Globe magazine? Oh yeah. You know, it was like the lesser of the three yeah. uh, tabloid, um, you know, sort of magazines. Well, at least you didn't have to invent stories about uh, jamming worms into petrol tanks. No. To uh, create uh, a new no, fuel. No, I never fell as low down as the Weekly World News. That's what I'm saying. Which yeah. Was the next one down. <laughs> 